Sharon, can you go on Facebook to see if the audio is working for me? Oh, I forgot to change our name too. Okay. You can go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, council meeting Wednesday, September 7th. Would someone from council be willing to read the acknowledgement, please? Councilor Ashley. Today, I acknowledge that the town of Bruderheim is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta. The town of Bruderheim honors the first peoples of this land. We recognize that we stand upon the land that carries the footsteps of Cree, Métis, Blackfoot, amongst the other nations who have been here for thousands of years. Therefore, the town of Bruderheim has an inherent responsibility to foster healthier relationships with the First Peoples and further the calls of action as outlined by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thank you, Councillor. Um, before I call this meeting to order, I just wanted to mention to folks that might be trying to listen in on Facebook that there will be only audio this evening unless we get the uh, video issues sorted out. Um, sorry, sorry about that. And I'll call this meeting to order. It is just looking at my clock, 7.03 p.m. Um, is there any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Nothing from admin, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Anything from council? Um, like to get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Councillor Len. I shall move we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you, Councillor Len. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Um, I, the only thing I wanted to note is uh, on the agenda, the original agenda didn't have a closed session and uh, the agenda has been revised and we have a closed session on it now. So just wanted to make note of that because folks might have seen the original agenda online. Is there any other comments, questions or concerns with the motion on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Um, we have a delegation this evening from Rail Safety Week uh no not delegation it's just a proclamation and the rail safety week proclamation i'll read that right now it's for the week of september 19th to 25th as rail safety week in the town of Bergerheim. <clears throat> whereas rail safety week is to be held across canada from september 19th to 25th 2022 whereas it is in the public's interest to raise citizens awareness of the dangers of ignoring safety warnings at level crossings and trespassing on rail property to reduce avoidable deaths, injury, and damage caused by incidents involving trains and citizens. Whereas Operation Lifesaver is a public-private partnership whose aim is to work with the public, rail industry, governments, police services, media, and others to raise rail safety awareness. Whereas CN has requested Town Council adopt this resolution in support of its ongoing efforts to raise um, uh, the rest of that sentence is missing. Resolved I, Carl Hulk, Mayor of the Town of Bruderheim, Alberta, do hereby designate the week September 19th to 25th as Rail Safety Week in the Town of Bruderheim. And I'll just sign this document. And September 7th, 22. And do we need a motion to adopt the, this, uh, looking for a motion from Council to adopt the Rail Safety Week Proclamation, Councillor Dana. I motion that we adopt uh, Rail Safety Week proclamation that Town Council claim, proclaim the week of September 19th to the 25th, 2022 as Rail Safety Week in the town of Bruderheim. Thank you, Councillor Dana. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we are looking for a motion to adopt the minutes of the August 17th meeting. Someone be willing to make that uh, deputy mayor. I make a motion that we adopt the minutes of August 17th, 2022, regular meeting of council. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with the motion on the minutes from August 17th? Okay, I haven't heard none. We'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to that motion? And the motion's carried. So now we can move on to page two, council priorities, uh, information requests. And we'll start with uh, deputy mayor Judy. Um, something came up, um, the housing's 
garbage and all that kind of stuff that that uh recycle unit or that composting thing had they been putting it out now on fridays i heard they weren't and had some issues over there you weren't aware of them mr mayor through uh, deputy mayor schuler no i'm not aware but i can check in on it yeah just let me know if they have any more quirks they forgot to put it out or weren't putting it out okay. i just want to make sure they follow through thanks thank you for that deputy mayor uh councillor dino and nothing at this moment thank you thank you councillor len yes i have a couple of things it's uh, to do with the Northern Lights Library. I just want to inform council that there's projected increases for the next four to 2026. It's a 1.5% levy. They haven't had an increase for several years. And this is what they're projecting. It'll be, I get the sense it will pass in the November meeting. I just wanted to let the council know it's coming. So we're going from 523 and we'll be going up to 555 by 2026. So just letting council know that the, what's happening there. They've been doing streamlining quite a bit there. Matter of fact, they're reducing their vehicles. Matter of, they're renting out even office space in their building. Try to uh, uh, stop using the reserve as some of the operating budget. And that's what this issue is. Now, the other issue, I need to make a motion on this, and I have it here in front of me. The, the provincial government, the last time they gave an increase to the library boards was 2015 and 16. And it was a very small increase. So as a, as a group, we are trying to be very, uh, uh, oh, I'm looking for a word, trying to increase that somehow. So that requiring every community send a letter off. We don't want a canned letter or a group letter. They want a letter from all the towns to Rick McIver stating it's time that they give an increase to the library board. And I would like to make that a motion and a copy of that letter goes to the Northern Lights Library. It's really important that we do that because right now they do have additional funding in place and uh, that we possibly could use a, I don't know how much it'd give us for an increase, but we're looking for an increase. Councillor Len, would it be okay if we make that a notice motion to allow administration time to deal with this so that it can come back yes, to council? Yes, then I, all of council will get the same information. That's right. Okay, I'll make that as a notice motion that we send a letter to the minister Rick McIver requesting funding increases for the Northern Lights. Okay, and if board. you have any more documentation that you can give to Pat to help well, out, I can give her the the proposed budget here. Mr. Okay. Mayor, through Councillor Flutter, is this time sensitive? No, no. It, I there the next meeting is not November, so we're if you can get it out in the next month would be fine. I would think. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Lynn. Anything else? No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Wayne. Um, just I just wanted to say uh, a big thank you um, to uh, Sherry, Patty, and administration, uh, Public Works, uh, Dana, the Ag Society. Less from the Ag Society, and anybody else that helped out this weekend. Um, it was a great event and uh, a lot of time put in by a handful of individuals. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that was supported it and helped out. Um, it was a great weekend. Uh, I think uh, the, the kids had fun. The um, players of the ball tournament had fun. So I just want to say thank you and um, thanks for everything you guys did for the weekend. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you to you, uh, Wayne, as well, because you volunteered too this weekend. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Ashley? Nothing at this time. Thanks. Councillor George? Yes, uh, getting back to the uh, railroad awareness. There's supposed to be, is there a presentation being putting on, put on sometime this month here in the town? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, sorry, I'm just checking my calendar. Um, sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, CN Awareness uh, is on September 20th from 6 to 8 at the Fire Hall. We also, uh, CN has agreed to go to the school during the afternoon, and we're going to be doing a presentation to the children at the school. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor George. Uh, program requests will start at Councillor George and work our way back. Nothing at this moment. Councillor Ashley? Nothing at this time. Councillor Wayne. I guess it's more of an information one, but um, it's just that time of year. I'm just kind of wondering 
time frame for ice to be put in and are we going to be doing the week alternating Lamont as well as we did in the past or last year? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Aleko, I believe in the CA report. Um, just let me look here. Facilities was mentioned. The ice, um, I want to say the first week of October, but this, I know I typed it, but I just don't have it on the top of my head. Uh, I read through, I didn't. Yeah, the ice plant will start up during the week of September 1st. Ice will be ready first week of October. Okay, and are we alternating? Is it is Lamont going to be a week before, a week after, or do you know if it's how that's going to work this year? Um, actually, uh, the newly formed group just booked times. They haven't uh, shared how that's going to work, so they book their ice times and they've confirmed those, but they haven't shared like if that's an alternate. Alter they they got all day Sunday every Sunday. So what about Lamont Lamont when they put the are they putting their ice in a week? Oh, I'm like, sorry. You no, know, last year we had the, that extra week of, of right. kids on the ice. Just right to... now, um, I don't know what Lamont's doing. I can check. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Councillor Lynn. Nothing at this time. Thank you, Councillor Dana. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Judy. Nothing at this time. Okay, um, thank you. Um, move on to request for decisions, ACCO Gas and Pipelines Limited Franchise Agreement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to provide council with the opportunity to review the Natural Gas Distribution System Franchise Agreement. We recommend that Town Town Council continue with the ACCO Gas and Pipeline Franchise Agreement at the rate of 20% for franchise fee for 2023. Council approved the National Gas Distribution System Franchise Agreement on May 9, 1956, and then approved renewals in 1976, 1986, 1993, 1999, and 2004, which extended to our present agreement in 2016. In 2016, Council renewed the agreement with the expiry date as set as 28th day of February 2026. Our strategic plan areas, franchise fees provide funds for upgrading infrastructure as it ages and requires replacement and repairs. Yearly review of the franchise agreement provides council with information for further discussions on the impact to budget and residents. Summary, administration receives information from ACCO Natural Gas Division each year, seeking clarification on the franchise fee agreement and any changes that may be required. If we are considering changes to the franchise fee for 2023, we must notify them prior to November 1st, 2022. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. Um, looking for a motion from Council to accept the ACCO Gas and Pipelines Limited Franchising Agreement update as information. Councillor Wayne. That's right, the rec recommendation saying we approve the 20%. Um, well, they. Just approve the contract. Yeah, it, yeah. the uh, agenda says accept the, as information. Mr. Mayor, if we could refer to the, uh, I apologize for that, for the uh, report, council report, use that uh, motion, please. Oh, okay. The town council continue with the ADCO gas and pipeline franchise agreement at the rate of 20% for the franchise fee for 2023. Okay, thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion? Councillor Lynn? Uh, administration, can I ask that franchise fees has been been on there for quite some time already hasn't it uh mr mayor yes since night through i'm sorry mr mayor through councillor Filardo, yes since 1976 okay then thank you that's what i want to know but we've slowly increased it um to 20 percent right Pardon? it's been increased since 1976 obviously right so administration is recommending that we leave it at the rate of 20 percent yeah, that's what I mean, that's yeah. Okay. Councilor or no, sorry, uh, Councillor George. This uh, franchise fee goes towards infrastructure. Is it for all infrastructure or just gas pipeline infrastructure and right of ways? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, all franchise fees are put in a reserve for utility upgrades. All utilities then, right? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, that's correct. Thank you. Um, yeah, Judy, Deputy Mayor, no? Okay. Anybody else have their hand up? Okay. Um, I just a question, Councilor Wayne? Yep. Um, and just for clarity, that the um, franchise fee is on usage, not on on price of, of gas, right? 
It's a percentage of the usage, that's correct. Okay. Um, the question that Councillor George was talking about, it was uh, didn't go uh, in part of the direction I was thinking is, so the um, franchise fee that we have at 20% that um, affects only businesses and residents or both? Mr. Mayor, all users of ACO gas in our community. Okay. And do we add any feedback from the last increase from the uh, fee? Like we had, I can't remember when the last time we increased it, but did you get any feedback from residents about what we are charging? Mr. Mayor, nothing that I'm aware of. Okay, thanks. And any other comments, questions, or concerns? Okay, call for a vote. Uh, all those. Oh no, Councillor George, you have something? Yeah. Um, is there any way that we could possibly bring that down at least 2%? Um, that, that would take a motion by Council. If you recall that, that this has been debated before and we've made motions and um, I think we stuck with what the recommendation was, if I remember correctly, but uh, nothing stopping you from making a motion if you want to change something, uh, Councillor George. And if if uh, Council uh, votes this down and approves something else, it, it's possible too. Um, that's uh, up to the will of Council. And um, do you have something new or is that in the same kind of direction? It's in the same kind of direction. Uh, where I'm coming from is with the high cost of utilities now, uh, maybe this would be a small step in uh, some kind of a saving for our residents. Uh, thanks for that, Councillor George. Uh, Councillor Wayne has a question. Do you have, or do they provide you with the kind of an average price per household of what it, of what it, what they're paying? Just to see how much, like what a 2% difference would be, what amount to? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lecco, I didn't bring that with me. And I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. I could bring that back to Council. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, now I remembered what I really wanted to ask. Um, so the, you mentioned that the money goes into reserve. So that reserve is for any infrastructure, like if it was a water reservoir, or is it specifically only for gas pipelines or? Mr. Mayor, it's only for utilities owned by the town of Bruderheim, so water reservoir would come under that as well. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Okay, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. And Mr. Mayor, I'll get those that information uh, to council on both franchise fees, what the average is per resident, household resident. Okay, thanks. Um, and Councillor Wayne and Councillor George. Okay, Councillor George. Um, we passed the motion and we had a discussion on a decrease. Administration was come to come back with some information on this here um, decrease, and yet we passed the motion. Uh, I think we should have had time to analyze the effects of uh, how, of how much the decrease would be, and uh, then bring this here uh, request for motion after we had the information. That's what I am saying. Okay, thanks, Councillor George. Uh, refer to our parliamentarian, our CAO, on what possible course of action here. Um, Mr. Mayor. You were correct in the way you did that. There was a motion on the table, and if council did not want to pass it at this time, they should have voted it down. Right, but we still can get the information, right? Absolutely, Mr. And at a subsequent uh, meeting, do we have the opportunity to uh, vote on this again if uh, someone makes that motion? So, Mr. Mayor, somebody would have to make a motion to rescind that motion that you just made. Exactly. And I have to let them know 
uh, by what was the date again? Sorry, Miss um, November. If we wanted to change it in any way. Yeah, so we'll have time to get that information and think about it and then see if council wants to change And if council wanted, it. after receiving that information, somebody could make a motion to rescind that motion that's been approved. So just a reminder to council, if you have concerns, then vote against the motion, right? Once the motion's on the table and you pass four, four of us, or four councillors, sorry, pass it, then it's passed. Thank you for that. So... Um, it's pretty clear we can move forward and we'll get that information at the next council meeting or before maybe. Um, traffic safety bylaw 01-2022. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Traffic safety bylaw 01-2022 to provide council with a traffic safety bylaw. The town council approves second reading of bylaw 01-2022, the traffic safety bylaw. Town council previously approved the parking bylaw 07-2011, the road bylaw Bylaw 778-2008, the off-highway vehicle bylaw 03-2011, and the transportation of dangerous goods routing bylaw 23-2014. These bylaws were scheduled for review and update and are being integrated into the new traffic safety bylaw. On August 17, 2022, Council gave first reading to the proposed traffic safety bylaw 01-2022. Council submitted some questions for administration review and to bring back to the September 7, 2022 Council meeting. Strategic plan areas. Create and maintain responsible infrastructure and development, providing legislation to ensure that our infrastructure is not compromised, building a safe and energetic community, providing legislation to address safety for those within or coming through our community, pursuing excellence in municipal leadership, development of bylaws to create a safe and sustainable community. Other impacts, the Traffic Safety Act, T-6, RSA 2000. Summary, the bylaws previously approved by Council, as listed above, were in need of review and revisions. Combining these bylaws into one bylaw ensures that all aspects related to vehicle, animal, and pedestrian traffic are taken into consideration. Upon approval of the third reading of the safety traffic bylaw, this information will be shared on our website and information with utility mail outs. And Council was provided um, answers to the questions from Councillor Lecco. And uh, Mayor Oak um, submitted a question on September 4th. Um, I see that I inquired about the in loading time frames did not change on back alleys. And the response is the issue is that in some areas of town that shots off any access from rear lane access to our residents. And we are um, receiving calls already um, monthly about residents being blocked in their lanes. And also we get concerns from emergency services of block lanes longer than five minutes. Okay, thank you for that answer. So we're looking for a motion from council to approve the second reading to bylaw 01-2022. Councilor George. Second reading of bylaw 01-2022, uh, the traffic safety bylaw as presented. Thank you for that, Councilor George. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Councilor Wayne. And Councilor Dana. Just it's kind of a petty one, but it's still it happens all the time. Um, it says no debris allowed to go on to highways or roads. Does that, does that mean washing vehicles on roads or driveway is not allowed if there's mud on the vehicle? I because I, I, it happens all the time. I just I, I don't want anybody getting. I know it's kind of petty, but I, just asking the question because I sent it a week two weeks ago, and I'm just curious. I just hate for someone to get a ticket for washing a vehicle. So, Mr. Mayor, we addressed the uh, repairing a vehicle, right? Um, I have to actually look into that. I'm sorry. About the washing, for sure, you can't repair your vehicles, and that means the oils and fluids. But as far as mud and uh, water going into our stormwater, can I check on that for you before third reading? Yeah. Just that clarity around the washing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, leads me to another question. So a number of years ago, we had a resident put a, a pile of debris from his lawn uh, from the summer and dumped it on the roadway. How do we enforce uh, this kind of like 1.3 I'm looking at about placing any snow, debris, dirt? Oh, we do that through uh, our peace officers as well as the RCMP. And the Traffic Safety Act does say no person shall allow water, mud, slush, or other materials to be on a public sidewalk. Uh, and of course that's from tripping, but I'm just not 100% sure about the roadway, water and mud, if that's different from debris. I'll just have to look 
yeah, I, well, I just don't want to make an assumption, but debris and the definition of debris and the definition of mud and water, I just want to clarify that. And maybe we need to add that. So it's a good, uh, it's a good catch there, Councillor Leco. 1.3 says uh, no person shall place or permit to be placed any snow, ice, debris, dirt, or other material removed from the highway within the town onto another highway. So, yeah. Deputy Mayor. So keep in mind, Petty, no <laughs> by Allah officer and no peace officer has the time to watch to see if somebody's pushing some dirt down the road. It comes from if your neighbor complains. So if you're not a good neighbor, all of these things, they're not going to be out here watching us. They're going to come out if your neighbor complains. I understand right? that, but so I, that's, I just want to know if that if that's yeah, part of it. If he all. does it consistently and blocks the highway or something, sure, of course he's going to get a fine. Because there's right? people out there that will do that. Like, sure, there's out there that will do that. And for but is reasons, it enough to bug everybody or is it not, know. right? Just so it, yeah. that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. And that's where you get into those petty little things about he said, she said back and forth. I've seen them a lot. So, I mean, it's, I think it's a good bylaw is if people really want to be petty, I guess they can be, mm -hmm. do they have the time? It'll just cost us money and then they'll know why their budget goes up. Right. It's called being a good neighbor and get along. Mr. So Mayor, the right. intent for sure of the bylaws, snow and uh, ice is our biggest problem. After we clear a street, uh, people push that out onto the street. So that's definitely from a uh, municipal standpoint, our biggest concern that we see. Also, people um, see a lot of that this summer. Landscaping materials getting dumped on our roadway while people are landscaping materials uh, in the roadway. So in the back alley, um, just the water from washing a vehicle, though, I definitely need to check that. It does say water, so that is correct. It does say that you can't, so. Councillor George. In our summary, we have animal and pedestrian traffic. I looked on the, I looked up on the Alberta traffic regulations for riding or, or driving a horse on the street, and we have nothing covered in this bylaw. Monarch. Mr. Mayor, Councillor Campbell, that's covered under the Traffic Safety Act? Not all of it. So which part's not covered, sorry? Um, as far as uh, as riding, like uh, uh, the usage of the road, and uh, if whether you're uh, leading an animal or, or uh, whether you're just, uh, uh, it's procedure. But um, in that, tra you're right in the Traffic Act, it does cover um, the uh, rights of a, a person on horseback or, or a vehicle driven by uh, or pulled by uh, horses that the animal does not, or the rider or the driver does not have to give the right away. And a lot of people assume that. That's the clarity of, that should have been in here. So Mr. Mayor, Councillor Campbell, just for clarity, what do you think is missing from the Traffic Safety Act, sorry? That... Just the uh, uh, more or less uh, do, uh, do respect sort of thing. Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Campbell, unfortunately that's not part of bylaws. Um, it's just like when you yield to the right, you yield to the left. That's not in our bylaws. That's if you have a license, you're supposed to know that. You're supposed to know if you have to yield to horses and uh, bicycles, pedestrians, right? But I can take a look if there's any other municipality that has a more expanded um, uh, Calgary citing. Has, Calgary has it. Uh, okay. But it is in the uh, Alberta Traffic Act. It is, yeah. I thought it covered it well, but if you don't think it does, I, so Calgary has a bylaw on top yep. of, okay, uh, thank you. I'll check that. Thank you, Councillor George. Um, I, I did have one more inquiry uh, about the timeframes. So if a person is moving into a new home or moving out of a new home uh, or whatever uh, residence and um, they're parked in the back alley moving uh, material, 
So after the 10 minutes or whatever time frame it is, they have to move the vehicle and then move it back or how did how does that work or did they get a special permit from the town for moving or how is that supposed to work yeah uh, mr mayor parking and um unloading are two different things right so yeah well they're loading or unloading their um, furniture for example yeah but so parking is you leave the vehicle you leave it there Right. So I'm assuming if you're loading and unloading, you can quickly move your vehicle as well. Right. You're not parking it there. OK. And then I mean, uh, that's my assumption, Mr. Mayor. OK. So. And then how is enforcement to work for something like that? Again, that would be on complaint driven. Absolutely. Right. OK. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments, questions or concerns with this motion? OK. Call for a vote. All those opposed? And the motion's carried. So, Mr. Mayor, if I can just um, clarify yep. for us for notes, we're going to check on the horse riding uh, bylaw in Calgary. We're going to check on the definition between washing and mud on the street. And was that everything on the traffic safety bylaw? Uh, Councillor George? S sorry, oh. let's just have one conversation, please. Councillor George? One way that may be able to stop that there parking is parking un unattended. Uh, that is one of the things that they have at the uh, entrance to the uh, U of A hospital, offloading and offloading area. You can park there and you can stay there as long as that vehicle is attended. Okay, maybe that's something that could be checked in our, our uh, bylaw. Thank you for that, Councillor George. So Mr. Mayor, that was everything. There was no other concerns. Um, is there we're, we're hearing lots of side chatter. Is there anything else that we need to have our CAO look into? If not, then we'll move on. 8.3 asset management capacity building. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Administration would like to provide council with an opportunity to participate in an asset management program. Be it resolved that Bruderheim Town Council directs staff to apply for the asset management cohort program opportunity from the RMA, AUMA, and IMAMA. Be it therefore resolved that the Town of Bruderheim commits staff and other personnel to participating in the asset management cohort program to advance our asset management program. Be it further resolved that the Town of Bruderheim commits financial support from its budget towards the cost of this initiative for staff travel and accommodation. Council passed a strategic plan, and within that plan, one of the priorities is to create and maintain responsible infrastructure and development. So strategic plan areas, creating and maintaining responsible infrastructure, an opportunity to create capacity for management of asset management for our community, pursuing excellence in municipal leadership, implementation of a strategic plan area for asset management program for accountability and efficiency efficiencies for budgeting, grants, and partnerships. Administration has been searching for opportunities for us to participate in training, looking for software applications and grants to, to continue with this program. It has been noted that many of the infrastructure grant applications ask questions about the asset management program. This funding through FCM for Municipal Asset Management Program includes training for staff and other parties. If Council gives approval for the Town of Bruderheim to participate, the approved res resolutions will be forwarded to RMA, AUMA, and IMA, and the application submitted. That's everything, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for our community. I'm looking for a motion from Council. Deputy Mayor. Do you want me to read all three of these, or we'll start with one? Um, be it resolved that Bruderheim Town Council directs staff to apply for the Asset Management Cohort Program Opportunity with RMA, AUMA, AUMA and IMA? Is it AUMA anymore? Or is it just MA? Yeah. AM. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, and be it resolved that the town of Bruderheim commits staff and other personnel to participating in the asset management cohort program to advance out us to advance our asset management program and be it further resolved the town of Bruderheim commits financial support from its budget toward the cost of the initiative for staff and travel and accommodation. Thank you for that very lengthy motion. Uh, any comments, questions, or concerns with the motion? Uh, Deputy Mayor and then Councillor Lett. So um, I'm assuming they've laid something out for you. What is the cost that they're looking at for doing some of this training, just a ballpark and, and the, and the uh, program itself? 
So, Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, no cost for the training. Uh, as in the motion, they're asking that council realize they'll be paying for staff travel and accommodations. Um, we are going to partner regionally. Uh, so, for City for Saskatchewan and Strathcona County, our, um, we're going to jointly apply so that the training would be local and there would be no cost. If we're successful, we would like host between our three communities, rotate it through the three. And um, yeah, so hoping that that uh, it's, it's, it's kind of designed for small municipalities and with um, they're finding that um, again, regionalization collaboration works. So bringing the training to us. Thank you for that. Councillor Lynn. Well, my, my, my concern is the staff itself. We have a staff shortage and it's, the workload is already too big for the most part and putting something else more onto the staff and time consumption There'll be a, there will be a cost for some overtime or somebody's going to have to take some time off then we're going to be short staff again. I, I, I don't believe we have the people available to participate in this at this time. Um, well, we don't manage the folks uh, our CAO does, so uh, we look to her for her expertise on this matter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I already work on asset management uh, for the better part of my job. It's all asset management related to our strategic plan. And um, this would just enhance my current knowledge. And I would probably bring uh, either director of legislative services or the director of infrastructure services, depending on the training components so they understand, as well as there'll be opportunities for elected officials to attend certain components of it. Okay, so the impact on the staff is? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, they're not saying how many hours. It goes from October to February. So um, as any other workshops, I would presume we would make the time. We do make the time for training and development. So this would be a focus for our team this year. Okay, so the, one of Councillor Len's concerns was the availability and the folks being overloaded. So this would fit in with the training already you're thinking of? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we budget for uh, training days, uh, obviously with our staff. So we pick what we're gonna focus on every year. And um, of course, you know, asset management, we have finished our GIS infrastructure gathering. It's all in GIS. And as you know, I'm looking for software to manage that information. And um, to get those FCM grants and things like that, we have to develop an asset management program policy, like we're still in the infant stage of it. So um, this will help us on that journey. So it sounds like CAO Patty's got a game plan for this. Thank you for the question though, Councillor Len. Councillor George. With our directors and the CAO going to attend these uh, courses, could this uh, uh, training have a funnel down effect to the rest of the staff within the public works and the administration at uh, a lesser cost? So Mr. Mayor, through Council Campbell, there's no actual cost for the training. It's just time as Councillor Fillardo pointed out, so. So it would be a benefit then for, for the, the attendees to this, these courses to do some training uh, with the staff that we have. So, I think uh, Councillor George is alluding to the there'll be a roll down effect of the information passed on from the folks that go to the training and then uh, the other folks that are not at the course might learn something from them. Is that what Absolutely, you're thinking, Mr. Mayor, whatever. Jordan? That's why I was saying I would, um, I'm the asset management lead for our community. And then I would take the, depending on the training, the workshops will be different. Obviously they'll have different topics and um, whatever topic that applies to, I would bring those people that deal with that topic, um, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's finance, whether it's admin, I would bring the appropriate people to that training for sure. What I was driving at is can the drive that cannot training be done here without sending people off to a training course. So Mr. Mayor to Council Campbell, that's what I was alluding to. A uh, few of us in the region are are going to apply together and try to get the training brought to us. If we get enough people, um, they'll bring the training to us. That would be a saving and uh, and uh, travel and uh, housing. Sorry. Thanks for that question, Councillor George. Is there a uh, Deputy Mayor Judy? Yeah, I think this is an excellent opportunity because as we've been building that asset management, I realize that it's also saved us time 
along the way. So the, even though, you know, from finding things and finding leaks and finding water and whatever they're doing out there, it's saving us time long term. So it's something that we definitely have to keep up with. I think uh, good find, Patty. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Uh, Councilor George. I have to give our CAO credit for looking forward. Uh, this is something that I think would be a great benefit to our community. The more knowledge we can get, the more training we can get, the better our staff will be. Thank you for that, Councilor George. Any other comments, questions, or concerns for Council? Haven't heard none, call for vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Now we can move on to 9.1. Looking for a motion to receive the mayor and council committee reports. That's Wayne. Make a motion that uh, council receive the mayor and council committee reports as information. Thank you for that, Councillor Wayne. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that? Uh, Councillor Dane. Mayor and council. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm waiting for the next one. Okay. No worries. Anybody else, any questions on the mayor and council committee reports? If not, we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. 9.2, uh, Chief Administrator Officer report. Uh, looking for a motion for that one. Councilor Dana. I motion that we accept the Chief Administrator, Administrative Office report. As information. As information. Perfect, thank you. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Councillor Dana, then Councillor George. Okay, um, just a question just about the ground squirrel gopher issue at the park. Did we go through our budget for pest control already? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Jacobs, yes, we did. <laughs> Can we look at another I don't know, an alternative or something else that we could try to, you know, to keep it under control. Um, any ideas or something? Obviously, we're out of budget, but out of money, but anything we could think of? Mr. Tomashat, are you online? Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> um, so as uh, CEO Patty indicated, we've spent our budget on pest control. Um, I just want to keep council uh, inform that we're not the only community that are having a, a very difficult time with ground squirrels. The dry weather has definitely um, embellished what they do to our, our uh, property. <clears throat> it's been a really tough year. Um, as far as doing anything more, we would have to go outside of budget in order to go any further with this, um, with our contract, our current contract, um, taking care of these pests. Uh, Councilor Dana has a further question. The only reason I ask, and I know that we have, um, like, there's issues all over with gophers and the pests and all that jazz, but um, just for liability purposes, um, especially if we do start um, having events there, um, there might be something that we maybe in the future, like, look at increasing the budget on our pest control or um, maybe bringing in stuff that is a little better than sand for those holes because they were digging right through it, maybe... Um, some clay or something to really get them packed in there or just some ideas. And I know we all have, and it's like all the communities, but I just look for liability purposes. Someone steps in the hole, that's that, right? So. And Councillor Jacobs, and just to give you a little more ease of mind, due diligence was extremely practiced here uh, over the summer, let alone uh, this last weekend. So liability would have been at a minimum um, <clears throat> clay. I have talked to a few other communities, what they're doing, uh, the ground squirrels will punch right through that. So it's really difficult to mitigate this and certainly um, going forward in 2023 budget, we'll look at increasing that to try to uh, get away from some of these hazards that these creatures are creating us. Thank you, Dennis, I, I appreciate that. I was just looking at seeing where we were at that, where we were at with, you know what I get, you know, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor uh, Dana. I just wanted to further add that I think this year was a more concerted effort on ground squirrels than I've seen before. And if we mm -hmm. continue to do that every year, I think that would uh, go a long ways to keep that uh, under control because um, playing uh, softball out there uh, in the fields um, this uh, past weekend, um, spent lots of time roaming around and there there was no gopher holes that I could find. They were all filled in. Um, 
the ground was uneven and maybe there's some thought about um, harrowing those fields to make the, the ground more even because a person could hurt themselves just from the uneven ground. But thanks for the question, Councillor Dana, Councillor George. Past experience with the ground uh, squirrel problem, I have always found that the earlier you can get on, on the area, even if there's snow on the ground, you'll do a better job of eradicating. They're hungry and you also get two crops, the present and the one that's coming up. Uh, uh, timing is a real good thing with them. Uh, uh, when they're uh, springtime, they're looking for food. Uh, and uh, as well, uh, uh, summertime, they've got lots of good green grass. So they don't like our, our uh, treats <laughs> so much. But that's uh, what I used to do early, early, uh, uh, getting out there and getting at them. So that's maybe something that we want to look at next year, getting out there, even if there's a bit of snow on the ground. Uh, I'd like to commend our uh, public works department for the work that they've done over the summer. Uh, they've kept our town clean, uh, relatively uh, weed free. They did their best at all these things that they task that they've had. Kudos to our young people that have uh, joined our, our workforce over the summer. Uh, I think uh, our uh, staff did a real good job. Thank you, Councillor George. I would wholeheartedly agree with you. And um, any other comments, questions on the CAO report? Weren't we supposed to start a lift pump, put in a lift pump this year? Mr. Thomasen? Sorry, I was just trying to unmute here. Um, sorry, uh, Councillor Shooter, could you repeat a lift pump? Yeah, weren't we putting in something that we had budgeted for? The relining of the sewer line. Just the relining of the sewer line? Yep. Is that all we've done? Know. Have we got yes. that done then? How come I didn't see that? <clears throat> uh, no. Mr. Mayor, through Deputy Mayor, no, we, we actually, I did report to council on that some time ago, um, that, that uh, bid we put out for tender came in extremely high. The relining, it's a uh, demand, supply and demand. And Mr. Tomaszek crunched some numbers and running a new line um, is almost at cost, same thing. And uh, if you remember the master service agreement, which some of the new council might not have seen from a few years back, um, proposed that it goes from Brookside right across the field to the lagoons. And so we're in negotiations with that landowner right now. Okay, thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with the CAO report? I just wanted to say that, uh, again, the, that ball tournament was really well received from folks far as far away as Stony Plain and, and out east of us, and heard numerous comments about all the positive things that the town has to uh, support a tournament. And the, there, there's people there that want to run more tournaments. So the idea of looking after the uh, fields there will, will not go away. <laughs> and hit, hitting them in the spring is probably a good idea. That one umpire said that he wants to bring an 18 team red eye tournament to the program. So that would be uh, good for our local businesses as well. Um, I have a question on communication. I heard uh, lots of comments from some folks that may be uninformed that uh, Bruderheim only advertises as town stuff on Facebook. Um, I just wanted to make sure that folks are aware that Twitter, the Instagram and the uh, website are all sources of information for the town, as well as the town does have two uh, signs that are, are uh, sources of information. Because um, what I had heard is folks saying that they only saw information or heard of information on Facebook. They don't, were not aware of the other sources of information. So I'm just wondering on, on the social media, it talks about Facebook and Twitter, but it doesn't mention Instagram. Is there any kind of, or is that lumped in with Twitter for the numbers? Uh, Instagram wasn't posted, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, we do have an Instagram, as well as uh, we, any events are advertised in Lamont Leader, as well as on 107. Uh, there was quite a bit of advertising on 107. I encourage our local residents to tune into 107. It's a great radio station and they have lots of local events and happenings in the community. 
and again, uh, newsletters, um, read your newsletters, lots of activity there and our utility bills. We usually put something there if there's something coming up during that time period. So, but Mr. Mayor, I'm totally open if uh, residents have any ideas that they would like to communicate with a different option, uh, please get those to us. We're open to any other options for communication. Thank you for that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Uh, okay, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. To correspondence and information items. Looking for a motion to accept the correspondence and information items. Councillor Lyon. I so move accept the correspondence and information items as presented. Thank you for that information, Councillor Lyon. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Okay, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. And before we go into the closed session, would uh, anyone want a comfort break? Okay, so make, make, please make a motion, Deputy Mayor. I make a motion that we uh, have a comfort, go for a comfort break. For five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none. Call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. We're in a comfort break for five minutes. And Mr. Mayor, I'm going to stop the live streaming as no um, motions will be resulting out of closed session. Thank you.